right, welcome back to The Secret Place, everyone. My name is Ashton, and here at The Secret Place, we are intent on building intimacy with God, our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you are looking to grow in your relationship with God, if you are looking to know the will of God, the Word of God, you've joined us here in the right place at The Secret Place. So if this is your first time, I would like you to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, engage with us. Let us know how your journey in The Secret Place with God is going. All right, fam, so obviously today I am not by myself. I have a special guest with us today. Actually, the first guest, I believe, to The Secret Place. So I have good sister in Christ, Brenda Palmer, joining me here from L.A. by way of Chicago. Is yes, that, we'll that say is, that. yes, very accurate, very <laughs> accurate, yes. <laughs> so we have my sister Brenda Palmer here. She has actually just did a pop-up Bible study in Atlanta. So she's going to be joining us here, and we are going to be talking about a topic of surrender, submission, a word the saints don't want to hear. <laughs> we barely want to hear. Right, I'm like, <laughs> all of us, all of us. We don't want to hear, but we're going to talk about surrender and what it looks like for us to surrender our lives, surrender our wills, mm -hmm. surrender our desires so that we could please the Lord. All right, so before we go jump into that topic, Brenda, can you just give us, for the people who don't know you, an mm -hmm. introduction of who you are, where you come from, mm -hmm. kind of your, your background with the Lord? For sure. Um, okay, so I'm from Chicago. And I currently reside in LA. I've been there for six years. Um, I am the youngest of ten. Oh. Um, okay. I feel like I always have to give. A <laughs> my mom is one. My mom is one of ten, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the baby, um, and I'm, my parents were both married before they married okay. each other. So I'm actually the only child they have together. So a blended family. Yes. Okay. So I always say I'm the youngest of ten, but I'm the only child. Okay. Basically. Um, and my mom actually had me with her tubes tied. So she wasn't, she was done having children. And I was like, you got one more. <laughs> I need, I need to be here. Um, so yeah, I was, my parents are pastors. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in church basically. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know. I went to undergrad in Mississippi. I did grad school in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. So I feel like okay. I've lived all over the gotcha. country and all of, and I did, went to an HBCU and then Syracuse okay. to PWI. So I'll yes. have the best the of contrast. Both yes, for sure. Okay. Um, and then my journey with God has kind of been an up and down ebbs and flows kind of thing. So I grew up in church, um, but I feel like I don't really think I met Jesus for real for real until 2019 mm. where I had to depend on Jesus. Yes. Um, and I think that solidified my relationship with God. Okay. And then I would say that majority of my life has been just saying yes to God and ending up places. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, that's a, you just, I feel like there's so much to unpack even there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so growing up a PK, like what was your, what was your perception of ministry? And even did you have a desire to be in ministry growing up a PK? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a desire to be in ministry. It wasn't like a hostile, no, mm -hmm. it's just, I didn't want to do it. Yeah. Um, like I, I was very involved in ministry growing up. Um, my parents have done everything from be youth pastors. Okay. Uh, I grew up in a Baptist church. And then when I was eight, I decided that I needed more. <laughs> <laughs> so you decided on your own. I did. I would like go and visit this <clears throat> apostolic church with my, okay. my god mom. And I liked it. Mm -hmm. And at eight, I actually was, I would say, very prophetic. But I didn't really understand it. Okay. And I grew up in a Baptist church. And it just was not, mm -hmm. I wanted to do more than sing yeah. in the choir. Like, I was actually learning when I would go to church with my god mom. Okay. And then my mom came to visit that church one day, and I looked at her, and I was like, we need to join. Mm -hmm. And she was like, girl, your daddy's going to kill us. <laughs> like, and I'm like, okay, you can do what you want to do, but yeah. I'm joining. And so me and my mom both joined that church, and then my dad later came too. And then um, I've, I feel like I've always been in different like pockets. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I feel like I've served in ministry. When I was 14, my dad started his own church. So okay. from like middle school through high school, I did all the things. All the I things. was the audio person. It was like throwback before screens where you had the projector where you throw the lyrics on there. Oh, wow. And then you okay. had to slide off like real throwback. <laughs> and soundboards weren't boards. They were little like boxes. Little boxes. And I did all of those things. Mm -hmm. I was the oldest youth, so I was also a youth, youth leader. leader of course. It was just too much. So at 18, I was like, I'm tired. Uh -huh. And so I would lie and say that I had to go to work because I worked in retail, worked okay. at Finish Line, and I was like, I can't even come today. Like, I got to work. <laughs> I was fed up. So I was you were, like, like, churched up. Yeah, it was just, because it just became, like, work. Mm. It's like, I don't want to be the oldest kid. I don't want to do all the things. Yeah. This is y'all church, not mine. <laughs> and so I think because of that, it 
again it was a relationship though yeah. right it's like we learn how to do all the mm-hmm. things we know we need to serve we right. know we need to show up we know we need to participate mm-hmm. but it's not rooted in anything yeah. and so at 18 i joined someone else's church <laughs> and hardest conversation i've ever had to have with my parents most kids were like I'm, you know, I'm pregnant. Mine was like, I joined oh, another church. <laughs> and you would think that that's not a hard conversation, it, but it is yeah. when you grow up in like a, a sure. church family and even what a church family is. Yeah. And I think that kind of leads to some of the dangers that we're seeing now when church becomes a thing that we do instead of like a place of fellowship and a mm-hmm. place of communion with the Lord. Mm-hmm. When we think that church is just another, even though it is the body, it is, a, it is an organization when we sure. start to treat it like it's a corporate mm-hmm. structure that just needs to process in a fun- in like in a corporate way, we don't leave room for the Holy Spirit and we don't make relationship with the Lord a priority, getting to know yeah. God rather than for just sure. getting to know church and how your specific church functions. Mm-hmm. I think that's a lot of what we're seeing today. And I feel like our generation is hungry for the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so there's just like, <clears throat> there's this clash of young children that are hungry for the Lord, but they don't know how to do that. For sure. Because of what churches look like for so long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree with that. And I think we don't make relationship with God the forefront and let everything overflow from that. Yes. So it's like there is no actual connection in serving it's <laughs> and like, relationship with God. Right. Because then you wouldn't be so offended while you're serving because you'd be serving as unto the, as Lord. Unto the Lord. It's like I want to be a part of what's happening in the Lord's house because it's the Lord's house. Right. And so I do think that there is a huge disconnect. Um, and I do think, too, because there's such a disconnect, we are seeing another generation with so much zeal and so much passion going, mm-hmm. where do I put this? Right. Because I go to church and it almost feels like they're trying to push, push it down. Push it down. Yeah, suffice, silence it yeah, for sure. Just to fit like the church norms. And I think that's something we have to be careful. Like, mm-hmm. we're not, we're, we don't change doctrine. Obviously, we're not going to change the word of yeah. God. But we should be able to be flexible um, how we minister to people mm-hmm. and I feel like as we talk about surrender that's something that the church has to be willing to surrender unto the Lord like mm-hmm. what does what does church what does the flow of church look like to yeah. you God in this season sure. rather as to what does church look like to us yeah. like what does church look like for our race like no what does it look like to the Lord for mm-hmm. this for this time no I think that's 100 percent true I was just having this conversation with my mom and I was saying like we see like all of these I don't know, Bible studies or like individual ministries apart from church, like are happening and they're thriving. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this, there's a disconnect with the church because I don't want to have a pop-up Bible study. (laughs) I don't. I want to be a part of a church where I can serve in a ministry that is doing this. And so I think that there is such a disconnect and I'm like, it's proving where the holes are because people are getting on planes right. going to other cities for a bible study for an encounter with the lord it's yes like, it's <laughs> that is crazy to and me it's like it's great obviously you know we have the body there's different gifts for sure. like people so we were at your pop-up bible son and mm-hmm. people were blessed but like you said is that we don't want to get to a point where it's necessary for me to be like okay well i want to feel the presence of the lord I need to go travel across the country. For sure. I need to, you know, follow this one specific person where if we were surrendered to the Lord's will, yes. this would be happening at every church. Every church. And it's so, you know, especially like, okay, so obviously we know, a lot of people know the Perrys mm-hmm. and we know Jackie and Megan just announced that they're doing this uh, this discipleship conference. Mm-hmm. And so they're really focusing on the early church and what the For early sure. church was doing. And I think that that's something that we have to get back to like surrendering to what the Lord has already yeah. showed us the body should look like mm-hmm. and how the church should function instead of just trying to make it like, it's almost like church becomes a Netflix series to some places where it's like, and I have nothing wrong with sermon series, but it's like, <laughs> for sure, for sure. what it's like, you know, it's just a production. We want our church to flow well. We want mm-hmm. the worship to look a certain way so that we have this aesthetic of what we feel like will draw people yeah. rather than submitting to the will of the Lord and letting him draw people with an everlasting love like he said he already has. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with that. I think that it is time that we get back to what God's original intent was for the church. Yeah. And I'm, I feel like I'm always screaming like, no, I am like pro-church. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think sometimes when you start ministries, when people are like, are you trying to start? I'm not trying to start. Right. I also like I've served in church my entire life. Yeah. I 
like the church, it, my heart is with the I church. I love the local church. I yeah. love the local church. I'm for the local church. I also served in the local church mm -hmm. and I was the most underserved. Yeah. I served in the creative department. I was a production person. I had to be the first one in and the last one out and nobody was worried about whether or not I encountered Jesus. Yeah. And so part of Come Alive was because I wanted people who have to serve week in and week out and never get a moment to just breathe, to have a place where they could go, hey, I just, I don't want to be worried about yeah. the lights. I don't worry about the time. I, I just want to be poured into. And so that was kind of my heart because I also led a team of creatives that I had to give them permission to go, hey, if you don't have it this mm -hmm. week and you need to go to the Lord, go sit yeah. in someone else's church. Go sit and be poured into. Like, it. go do that. Mm -hmm. Because it's also hard to sit in your church if your brain is, I, 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 <laughs> I still struggle as a production person to sit in other people's churches and be like, is somebody gonna fix the mic? Yeah. Is somebody gonna fix the lights? Is somebody gonna be like, uh -huh. what are we doing here? And so I think like it's okay because we're all the body. Right. So I shouldn't be threatened because you went to the church down the street because you need to be fed. Exactly. Like as long as it's a sound so place. As long as they're teaching Bible, teaching yeah, Jesus. Yeah, they're teaching Bible and they're teaching Jesus, and you can breathe and you get what you need yeah. to fulfill your calling here. I'm good with that. And so I think like we have to we we have to be mindful of that, but also when we start seeing all of these movements popping up, okay, I think the church then goes, how do we work together? Yes. Like, okay, there are influencers, but I don't want to be people's pastors on the internet. Right. I want to have a local church I can say, exactly. hey, you're in this city, please go here. Right. And so I always want it to be a pathway mm -hmm. that even if you're trying to figure it out, you have somewhere to go along yeah. the way, but please, by all means, get in a local get church. In a lo <laughs> I think that's a message like, get in a local a church. local church. And if I could just plug Brenda right now, one, one thing that I love about Brenda's ministry is that she preaches and teaches Jesus. Mm -hmm. And like, you would think that that's an obvious, but there are people that are just not preaching Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the Bible even said, if someone comes to you teaching a different Jesus, yeah. let them be accursed. And yeah. so we just like intermission, you need to be making sure that if you're listening to the word, the word of God come from someone, Jesus should be the center of, of the Not center. you. We have, <laughs> listen, we love David. We love all the people, but yeah. you should not be slaying every giant in the world no. in every sermon because. And even in the story of J David is Jesus. Right. Like Jesus is literally in the in entire the story Bible. Of everything. Of everything. That's a whole other topic for another day. But So getting back to surrender. Okay, mm -hmm. so you grew up in a, a church environment. You grew up in a PK. Let's talk about when you felt like you were called to ministry. Mm -hmm. Was there a struggle of really saying yes because you were like, I don't want to do this? Like, What did your for what sure. was the process of you surrendering and submitting your yes to the Lord? And let's life? be clear, it's still a struggle. I, yeah, like surrender. I am in it, and I'll be like, I don't want this. Yeah. Like, I think it is a consistent journey of mm -hmm. saying yes, like over and over again. But I would say in 2014, I finished grad school and I planned to move to L.A. then. Mm -hmm. um, and then stuff started falling apart. Okay. And I'm one of those people who like, if stuff just started like unraveling, For I'm, no reason. I'm like, okay, let's pull back. Yeah. And I was, I'm like, I was never built to live in my car. So like, if the <laughs> Lord don't want me to go to LA, I'm, I'm That's not, a tough city to be it's not for me. For, right? It's not for me. And so um, I ended up staying in Chicago and with two degrees, I was working at H&M. Okay. And I was like, this can't, this can't be, this can't be my life. Uh -huh. This is not what the Lord has planned right. for me. And so I started um, volunteering at my church, okay. like running social media in Chicago. In Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then from like volunteering with social media, then they brought me on part time. Okay. And then I transitioned to a full time role. Mm -hmm. And so then I started running media production creative. And then I started leading a young adult ministry. Okay. Um, not something I wanted to do at all. So they were like, and we didn't, like at one point in church, we didn't have a lot of young adults. Okay. And then it was like, we blinked and it was a church full of young adults. Okay. And so they're like, you take them. And I'm like, oh, okay. Do what, right? right. So it started out with like just us hanging out mm -hmm. because like that transitional phase of like, okay, I want to follow Christ, but all my friends are doing all the things I'm trying not yeah. to do. So like it just turned in, it started with like hanging out, like bowling, karaoke, mm -hmm. we would have like open mic nights. And then they made me start a small group. A little bit more intentional. And I was year. like, I don't like this. So for the first year, I mm -hmm. sat in a house <laughs> with five to 10 young adults. Okay. And every week I would tell them how much I didn't <laughs> want to do it. And I would go, I didn't ask to be here. Mm -hmm. And I would open up the notes that they mm -hmm. gave us and I would just read the notes. Yeah. And then at one point it was like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's such a real thing because sometimes we give our yes to Jesus, but it's with an attitude. Yeah. It's like, fine, but I'm gonna give it to you. And, and I wasn't giving a yes. I felt like I knew 
forcing me to do this. Yeah. And then it was kind of like I was the only one. Yeah. But no, it's true. And I think like sometimes we can give a yes verbally, but not with our heart. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was 100%. Yes. I was just showing up, doing things. And then finally, mm-hmm. um, somebody like came to me and they were like, like the moment you get serious, like God's going to use you. Yeah. And it's like, it's never going to be the same. And so then I started to like actually study whatever they were giving me as a handout. <laughs> and like, I really feel like in that room for a year is where God developed my teaching mm-hmm. gift. Cause I, and I didn't see it that way yeah. in the moment, but it was like, I learned how to like study the word and mm-hmm. then how like I was using my creativity to like articulate it to yeah. other adults. And it went from five people every Monday mm-hmm. to we eventually grew to 80 people okay. a week and we would have to like move to a different, mm-hmm environment and so I did that um for like two years and then I had like a little situation at church it was really traumatic y'all I don't want to talk about it again but it just it rocked my entire world yes it did we'll leave it where it is we'll just leave it there please (laughs) (laughs) this is gonna be the first podcast I'm not gonna talk about it (laughs) um but that moment in my life, because I really wanted always to move to LA. I wanted okay. to work in production. I wanted to work in TV and entertainment. Like that was always a thing. But in that season of my life, I had settled and that was what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this ministry thing. I'm gonna live in Chicago. Like this is gonna be it. Okay. And then that thing happened. And I was like, nah, this ain't, <laughs> this is not it. And I visited LA during the toughest time. Okay. And I went to visit one and Pastor Tarek preached a message called When Everything Changed. Mm -hmm. And that message saved my life because I don't think I would have lived through that Mm -hmm. endeavor without that message, like without that word. And I think that uh, that was like in that time when I went to visit L.A., God was like, you need to be here now. Mm And I wasn't trying to go. Yeah. Because I didn't have an interview. I didn't have a plan. And LA is not the place you just. LA is not the place you just go. It's and, not. And <laughs> no. And but I knew in that moment that would have been May of 2018. I knew that like it was for ministry. Okay. I still didn't know it was gonna look like this. Full time ministry. Yeah. No, I had no context. Mm-hmm. But I felt like the reason God made me wait is because He needed to like show me ministry first in a context that was different from the ministry I grew up in. Yeah. Because usually our apprehension is because I there's no way I could see myself in what I had known ministry to be. Right. And so I feel like God needed to like, like girl, mm-hmm. like if you trust me, yeah. like let me show you like how I'm gonna do this. Yes. So that brings us to a good point because I think our yes to the Lord is so much easier when you have that relationship mm-hmm. with him. And so it's like, I feel like if you're struggling with surrender, it's because you don't truly understand the relationship with the father yet. Yeah. Like, I think to be fully surrendered, you have to know your sonship. For sure. Your sonship being a daughter, like that really enables you to really give a yes easier. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're in a place where, you know, everyone wants to be who God has called them to be. But you have to know who God has already said that you are. For sure. To give him a yes. Yeah. So do you feel like, even the endeavor that we're not going to talk about, do you, do, you feel, <laughs> do you feel like that brought you closer to the Lord and allowed you to trust him? Or oh, at least, 100%. So like you had nowhere else to run to. 100%. And I feel, I feel like, I feel like I hadn't ever had an encounter with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because I think two things happened. Even though that was the worst time of my life, because of how closely I drew to God, yeah. I was experiencing things I had never, like on a spiritual level. Like spiritual. So like, yeah, like even <laughs> that, during that season of my life was the first time I ever stood up on the platform and gave a prophetic word to the mm-hmm. church. I, I, would, I would have never done yeah. that. But I was so close to God, it was like He wouldn't let me yeah. not. And like you knew it was from the Lord because of Be- because of the intimacy that you had from Him. And where I was, like, because I was like still at that church. Yeah. And I literally like go to the pastor and I, I was like, "Can I say something? Can I say something? Oh. I would have never done that. <laughs> never done that. And like I'm like, <laughs> I I literally watched a video on my phone the other day, and I'm like, twiddling in my ears, scared out of my mind, walking back and forth saying stuff. And then I like come back down and he walks up to me. He says, you need to do an altar call. And like literally an altar call happens and people start coming to the, and I'm like, what are, who, what are we about to do with them? Like, and I was like, dang, the worst time of my life produced this level of intimacy with God that activated my gifts essentially. 
And I, I feel like in this moment, even then, I kept saying, like, this had to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have never known God on that level. I would have never known what God yeah. placed on the inside of me. And I would have never left. Some, and it's, it's, I won't even say unfortunate, but sometimes it takes you hitting a place of rock bottom for, sure. for you to really see, like, what's inside of you mm -hmm. and also who's inside of you. Yes. Because sometimes we can have this image of God where it's like, you need to know God in the darkness before you really just get to these platforms. Yeah. And you're like... You know, we see the highlights of people's Instagrams, but where were you developed in so many people? Everybody mm -hmm. needs to be developed in the secret place. 100%. Like, you need to know the Lord for yourself. So when you're on these platforms, you you know who you're surrendered to because mm -hmm. it's so easy for you to for you to blow up. And then it's like, I'll give my yes to whoever has the most money. Yep. Or I'll give my yes to whoever wants to, you know, give me what I want. Mm -hmm. Instead of knowing that my yes is to the Lord and to the Lord only. For sure. And so you mentioned, okay, so let's talk about what giving a yes looks like because... Giving a yes is not just, you don't give a yes once. No. Like you give a yes multiple times in an hour. Over and over. We've given multiple yeses even just being in this room <laughs> because like it's an ever evolving mm -hmm. thing. And the Lord, he doesn't give you your entire purpose at one time. So yeah. it's like even being called into ministry is like, okay, I'll say yes to ministry. Yeah. Then being a preacher, okay, I'll be a preacher. But what type of preacher do you want me to be? For sure. What do you want me to preach about? Mm -hmm. So I guess we can kind of, we'll steer the conversation here renouncing and denouncing <laughs> for sure so both of us are preachers both of us have renounced mm -hmm. so let's talk about because even that um you know we spoke a little bit earlier like mm -hmm. when i i didn't want to be a preacher that was preaching about renouncing and yeah. denouncing because i didn't want the totality of my gifts or my ministry just to be like oh he's only the preacher that talks about renouncing and mm -hmm. denouncing and the lord was really struggling really battling with me to get me to understand like your yes to me has to be yes to every part of For what sure. I tell you to preach about mm -hmm. not just you preaching and teaching things that are easy or you know popular not even that I wanted to be a popular preacher but yeah, you wanted people to listen right it's like sometimes you just want to teach doctrine sometimes you don't want to teach <laughs> you like, want to encourage the people you want to encourage people you want to edify people <laughs> yeah. but it's like you know sometimes your yes has to be consistent so let's talk about what it took for you to renounce and denounce something mm -hmm. that it's meant a lot to you at one point. For sure. Yeah, no, I think um, it, that was really easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was easy for me because of what you said earlier, because of my relationship with God. Right. Like, I, I give yeses mm -hmm. all the time. So I feel like that one was really easy because I recognized that I had made a covenant with something outside of God. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't like a second guess. Yeah. But it was a delayed response because i pledged spring of 2011 okay. and then fall of 2012 like that summer i went home and i've got really serious like yeah. about my relationship with god and i feel like that was the first thing he asked mm -hmm. me for it without any revelation of like the covenant things yeah. i just think that it had the potential to be a god mm -hmm. in my life and not because like not in the way that i think sometimes people think about it like oh i was putting it over no like i was very confident in who i was yeah. prior to having letters but there was a version of me that i felt like my former line sisters needed of me that didn't necessarily align with the walk i was currently on yeah. and i think for that reason god was like you got to come up out of this out. Yeah. for sure. And not even, I don't have no revelation of none of the things yeah. I know now, but I think it was simply that it was, there's a bond that you go mm -hmm. into where like I was riding for them, yeah. like, and would do anything, mm -hmm. including disobey the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> and it did. I probably lasted like three months, like homecoming came around. I didn't wear no like uh -huh. letters, but I wore the colors. Yeah. I didn't participate in most things, but I just like hung out with them because they were my, fr they were my yeah, they social your, group. Your family. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just us. And so I lived off campus and those were probably the loneliest couple of weeks <laughs> I had ever experienced. Cause I was like, well, we, we would hang out at the tree. Right. I'm not hanging out at the tree. Right. So like, what am I doing? And I couldn't take it. And I went back <laughs> and never talked about like mm -hmm. denouncing again. Yeah. I, I even reached out though to them, like the organization, mm -hmm. and they never even got back to me. Yeah. So it was like, so it, kinda, I was like, Lord. It's he, not really from you. I was like, it was an Abraham Isaac. Yeah. You just wanted to know if I would if do it. If you would give it up. And yeah. I would, but now I'm back. Right. <laughs> and I was like chapter president too. So I was like very. You were, you were that Delta. For sure. Yeah. I was. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's, the people need to know that too, because it's like, I think there's this 
illusion that people who are denouncing and renouncing is just like, oh, you weren't, you weren't popular, yeah, you weren't popular. It was like, on the nah, yard. she was. Yeah. Like, and I would go to any party by myself in any city and be good and be really good. Yeah. So it's like, nah, I'm not, I'm not that one. <laughs> I was not, I was not that one. I, yeah. I was, I was right. for sure, for sure. And I don't, and I know like everybody doesn't have this. But my former line sisters, the ones that I was close mm -hmm. to, we are still very, very close. Yeah. Like, we still have a group chat. I know I did leave the other group one. I yeah. made it a, a public announcement. Like, hey, guys, <laughs> you're probably going to see this on the internet. Right. You should know I did this. Yeah. And then they're all like, didn't we already do this? <laughs> 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 did you already, girl, we? I, another yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. And so I think I've been blessed enough to actually have friendships that were, yeah. like, that was never Outside the of core of our friendship. Yeah. It's maybe how we were introduced to each other, but mm -hmm. it's not the core of our friendship. And they were holding us down. We were talking crazy on the internet. Yeah. I had my former license. like, you good? Because uh -huh. I'm ready to, you to know what I'm saying, off. to get the people together. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's been, like, a really cool. But I think, like, to your original question is, like, what helped that yes and why it was so quick is that I just feel like I'm at a place in my life where nothing is more important than pleasing God. Yeah. And so even if it wasn't connected to all of the demonic things and the covenants and God just said, hey, I need this from you, right. he can have it. And see, that's a deep, deep thing about surrender. It's like anything that we can't surrender or give away for God, it's, it, an, it's idol. an idol. And just for because sure. it may not be a physical idol that we can see, just mm -hmm. because we're not carrying on a statue, like there are idols on the throne of our hearts and we have to ask ourselves daily, like, am I willing to surrender this to the Lord? Mm -hmm. And so that brings me to a story in the Bible. Uh, I think it's First Samuel, First Samuel chapter one, Hannah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we know Hannah, mm -hmm. and Hannah gave the Lord a true surrender. For sure. But I think sometimes we can take this story, and if we're not, and this is where the relationship with the Lord comes in, because if mm -hmm. you don't have a genuine relationship with the Lord where you truly love Him, it's easy to think like, okay, I'm going to surrender this to the Lord, but I have an expectation. Of him to give something back mm -hmm, to me mm -hmm. because hannah you know she gave a she gave the son to the lord but she also got something back but hannah's heart was so pressed to the lord but she's sure. like i'm going to give this to you the thing that i want the most mm -hmm. and you do what you do with it what you desire mm -hmm. and so let's talk about what giving an authentic yes looks like yeah. because sometimes we can try to manipulate god for sure and especially i feel like a lot of us grow up fasting with this idea of like okay mm -hmm. if i want something move the hand of god. right let me manipulate mm -hmm. and move the hand of god with a fast but really like that's not that's not how we move god yeah so what what to you like generates an authentic yes to the lord i think an authentic yes is one that is purely about pleasing him mm -hmm. and not about chasing the outcome okay because most of the time it's like, okay, God, I'm gonna give you this yes. Cause I know on the other side of it, right. it's gonna be a blessing. I'm giving you this timeline. I'm, I'm giving, right. I, so I know, here's a great example of that. I'm not gonna have sex until I'm married. Right. So I know you're gonna give me a husband on the other side of this right. because I'm gonna have a sex. Right. <laughs> and it's like, no. Like celibacy doesn't mean, celibacy, celibacy isn't an exchange for automatic spouse. No. Like what if the Lord is telling you you're gonna be like single for the rest of your Listen, life? Listen, now, I don't know whose word that was. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I don't receive that <laughs> at all. But I think that we have this misconception that like, like I do something for God, He does something for me. Yeah. And it's like no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. The yes is produced based off my revelation of God. Yes. Like my response to Him is a pure reflection of my intimacy with Him. Yes. Like my ability to trust Him mm -hmm. and to trust that, like, if God is asking me for something or to do something, like, there's obviously something He's inviting me into partnership with, and it's like that's enough for me. Right. And I think what I'm learning is like. The, the journey of yes is less about the things I get to experience on the other side of it, but the God I get to meet through it. It's like, as a result of this yes, I experience another layer of who God is. Yeah. Like I know him and the more I say yes, the easier it becomes because of the person I'm saying yes to. Yeah. Not because of what I have to give up or what I get out of it. It's right. like, nah, I know God to be this way mm -hmm. because I said yes. yes. And most of the things that I've experienced in life can be tied to knowledge of God, not because I got these amazing things. Because when I say yes, I didn't know that. Right. right. <laughs> I had no, I, I couldn't have even dreamed or imagined that saying yes to walking away from my job would lead to all the things it led to last year. I had yeah. no, and, and, and before it got good, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> it, it was absolutely 
fucking terrible. Right. I'm like, you want me to be poor? <laughs> I I don't understand. It's not even real yeah. poor, but it is poor in my mind. Like it's when you're leaving something that's so because sometimes the Lord will ask you to leave something that we think is great to come to something that doesn't seem as great no. in the moment. Or at least what we think is great. Because For sure. we tie great to financial success. Yep. Our happiness mm-hmm. as opposed to the joy of the Lord. For sure. Listen, because the joy of the Lord, you can be, you can have the joy of the Lord in, in rock bottom when you have that intimacy with him. For sure. And your yes has to come from a place of intimacy with the Lord because my yes to the Lord is, okay, Lord, I'm going to say yes to you in this. My life may never be what I think is good mm-hmm. or fun, but because of you, because I know who you are, I've experienced your goodness. I'm going to say yes to you. For sure. And it makes me think, let me make sure I get this right because I don't want to misquote scripture on YouTube and <laughs> But in Job, right? Job 38. So we know the story. If you don't know the story of Job, go read the book of Job. But Job, you know, Job suffered a lot. Mm -hmm. And Job got so many things taken away from him. And Job began to, you know, he obviously he would question the Lord. And so in Job chapter 38, the Lord, like, he kind of reads Job down. If you really read Mm -hmm. it, he's like. Because Job starts saying, like, I did, like, all these things he did. And God's like, no. God is pretty much like, (laughs) Have you ever done this? Like, have you right. ever prayed anything? Come on. Have uh, you ever counseled me? Yes. And so I think when we understand how sovereign the Lord is, mm-hmm. our yes comes a lot easier because you understand, like, the Lord is sovereign. Mm-hmm. And so he is in control. Yep. So why, who are we to disobey a sovereign God? Come on. And so we have to surrender our pride. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so much pride in this generation, and we all deal with pride, and that's something that we have to check our hearts today like where am i prideful Mm -hmm. where's my pride keeping me from giving the lord a yes especially when it comes to our gifts because it's like so like the whole renouncing and denouncing thing Mm -hmm. who are we to say like lord you have gifted me with the gift of speaking preaching to who am i to say i'm not gonna preach it like you gifted me this gift and i have the audacity to tell you how i'm going to use it i hear you ask no i hear you and this is like listen this is a whole thing i had to tell i pretty much had to look myself in the mirror and say Mm -hmm. this because i'm like lord i I wanted, sure. to, I wanted to get it over with, but I didn't want to, you know, be preaching and teaching about this because of, it's just, it's, it's weighty. It, okay, it is, and I think I didn't know this was like a thing, uh, like, like, there's a whole world uh, in my head, I'm like, because I feel like my, so much of my ministry is just me, like, being transparent about whatever yeah. God's teaching me, mm-hmm. right? So, I'm thinking this just falls on that list. Yeah. There's a whole world. That's a whole movement. And I'm like talking to my friend. She's like, yeah, I mentioned your name to somebody. She's like, oh, the denouncing girl. I said, I yes. am not the denouncing girl. It's, oh, my God. It's literally, they're like, they call us the denouncers online. So it's like a whole thing. Guys. And it's like, if you only knew, and I think, I will I will say from like some people who have renounced and denounced come out very bashful and very prideful so it's almost you know it makes it hard for people to receive the message because i was one of those people it was hard to receive yeah like i remember i used to see them i'm like oh i agreed with them but i was like okay i just don't think that that's that that deep or that serious to me i I promise you i never listened like i even had a friend who recently like had denounced the end of last year she wrote a Mm -hmm. book and everything and i muted her content yeah because it just and it it wasn't bad i also think that's a spirit for sure, that like causes us to be irritable that we don't hear. Frustrated. Yeah, yeah. at first it's like, could y'all stop? It right. is like not that deep. It's not that deep. Until I found out it actually was that deep. Deeper. It's it deeper is. than we even know right now. Yeah, like, for sure. For sure. It just comes to the fact that we're so surrendered to the Lord where it's like, Lord, if you if you say it, I'll say yes to it. Even if I don't know the depths of it, if you're saying this, I'm going to say yes. That's the thing. And I think... Because I feel like I've been having conversations with this with people who are not necessarily as surrendered. Mm-hmm. So it feels like this really hard thing to conceive in the sense of like, is it that deep? And yeah. it's like, even if it was the surface, the most right. surface thing, if the Lord asked me for something. And so I think if you struggle to say yes to God, this is, it's going to always be yeah. hard for you. Like it's, we're not even talking, we're not even having the same conversation. Right. And so I think for me, it was so easy because it's like, not only is God asking me of this, but he like asking me to give this to him, mm-hmm. but he's also revealing some things. Yes. And now he's asking me to talk about it. Cause mm-hmm. those are different things. Cause yes. I see that online. So why y'all just couldn't, you know, go out silently. I'm like, I didn't come in silent. Right. I wasn't in, I, I was loud. Wow. Very loud. Who, who doesn't post their probate picture? I was very loud and, and a little like, you know, prideful, very much, very like, much. 
I was like, ooh, I need to go find all my old tweets and Listen, just get rid of I them. I just deleted my whole old Twitter. Yeah. Because I it was just should. like. I probably should. Because it, because it, I, and I didn't, I'm like, man, it comes with such a spirit of pride. I remember, like, I would go places and dare somebody to say something to me. Right. Like, it's like, I'm a, like, I'm, yeah, I'm great. Right. It's, it's like, sit down. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Outside of that community, it means absolutely nothing, nothing to anybody. But nothing. it's like it's so much pride, and it just yeah. goes to show how the enemy will manipulate For sure. and twist you know things up. But even you know when we think about saying yes to the Lord, like saying yes to the Lord, you don't know what you're saying yes to. No, and you saying yes to the Lord requires a level of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like saying yes to the Lord is going to. There's a cost with saying yes. And I think sometimes a lot of people say, oh, I didn't count the cost. I think sometimes that's our problem is that we are counting the cost. For and sure. we're seeing what it's going to cost us, what mm -hmm. we're going to give up. And we're like, my yes isn't worth it. Yeah. Like what I'm giving up is not worth saying yes to. So how do you like, how do you minister to people that have counted the cost and they're like, I'm not ready to give this up? Yeah. How do you, how do you like, and not that we have to advertise the Lord, but how do you help people see the fullness and the goodness of God and why giving the Lord a yes is worth it? Um, I think two things. I think the first thing I always try to communicate is that you don't actually have a choice. I think like <laughs> we we consider like, yes. it's like, no, you have a will, but when you said yes to follow Jesus, mm -hmm. you gave up your choice to right. do what satisfies you. And so I think that sometimes it sounds like, well, what do you, yeah, mm -hmm. you, like following Jesus is a death. Right. A consistent death. It's almost like dying, Every resurrected, day. and dying again. It's like, <laughs> all right, I thought I was good with dying. And so I think I, I try to say that all the time. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things I probably would say in every sermon is like, your life is not about you. Yes. And I think the more I hold on to that, and it gets, it's hard. Mm -hmm. I think the other side of that is like how I try to encourage people is I'm very open when I take a step and recognize that God wasn't in it and be like, ah, yeah. I got to pull this back. So I don't only show, like, I say yes, and here's what happened. Mm -hmm. I'm also saying, like, I thought I was saying yes to God, but this was really me right. driving. Like, I just had a podcast drop this week, and I'm like, I was going to start a Patreon, and the Lord said, who told you to do that? Like, and I don't want to say those things, but right. that's the truth of the walk. That, yeah. And I also don't want people to always think, like, I get it right all the time, because I don't. Right. I'm on this journey just like everybody oh, else. I'm just deciding to share mine with yeah. you. And hopefully it helps you along in the, your journey, but I don't have it figured out. Right. I mess up all the time. And so I think like being able to say like, but I still don't have a choice mm -hmm. because if I had a choice, I wouldn't be doing this at right. all. I wouldn't. Like who, who really would? And I, that brings people us. People who want to do this. Some people who want to do this. And then like some people want it for the wrong reason. For sure. They're, they're for give, sure. They're give, that gets back to giving a yes for the wrong reason. Yeah. And so something that's been really ringing in my head a lot is discipleship, mm -hmm. because like being discipled helps you to understand why it's why it's necessary to be a yes, but also helps you to give that yes. And gives me context for what it looks like. Yes. And so I think that's something like a lot of people, the church, getting back to the church, has to get back to mm -hmm. discipleship, because we have this young Gen Z generation, and I don't know Gen Alpha, Alpha. whatever's mm -hmm. whatever coming after them. You know, they they have all this zeal, they have all this knowledge and wisdom but no one's discipling yeah. them and so i think even being disciple takes a yes but i think we have to understand those of us who are a little bit older who have been walking with the lord like we have to give a yes to disciple other people for now. sure like we have to pick up the pick up our cross but you know i have to disciple this person even if it's going to cost me financial resources yeah. mental resources it's and my time. time for sure like, no that's who, real life like long suffering can anybody say yes to long suffering these days for sure no so can you talk about how like how discipleship has played a role in where you are today? Um, because hmm. I saw one of your podcasts that you did. You were like, people will ask you more about your dating. They will rather than they being disciple for sure. And it's like, have we pushed discipleship that far back to the to the like forefront of what the church should be doing? Where it's just like, a, oh, you know, if you find somebody to disciple you, it's cool, but it's not necessary. Yeah, I think we. Like when I say we, I feel like the millennial generation, the people that have kind of have the mic right now, I think we've restarted the conversation yes. of discipleship because going to church for the last four four years, I can't remember the last time I heard discipleship. Mm -hmm. I've heard join a small group, small group I've yeah. heard join a team, and I've heard go to growth track. Mm -hmm. And none of those things are um, a filler for discipleship. Right. And so I think like 
it's necessary but i also think that we've come to the place where it's kind of like we have to be the the thing we've been looking for yes. and so if discipleship is follow me as i follow christ then okay i'm gonna have to trust the wisdom of the holy spirit that says the people that are in my life god as i follow you like i'm gonna invite them into my space yeah. and so that is what i've been doing now there are people who check on me there are people who are like you good yeah i'm praying for you like all of those things and i think like as it relates to discipleship i feel like most of us are discipling each other yeah. <laughs> it's like all right we gonna figure this right, out. We're gonna hold through, each yeah. other accountable. We're gonna walk through it. And so I think like that's just I think that's just the point we're at right now. I was literally having a conversation today. The girl who's a worship leader, she's like, "Where are the elders? Like, where are the old? Like, yeah. we?" And I said, "I think I was just saying personally. I was like, I think sometimes the way I present makes people think either I'm already being discipled or I'm not interested in or being discipled. Yeah. And so I'm like, both of those things are not true." Not true. And somebody please call me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At this point, it's like, call me. All right, call me. <laughs> um, but I think, like, and that's something I've been praying about. It's like, okay, God, like, spiritual covering, covering is really important. And yeah. that usually falls on our pastors. Um, but also, like, what is the context of discipleship for someone who travels a lot? Right. And I'm not normally at home. And I'm like, I don't know where we got this idea that discipleship always has to be proximity because Paul was discipling Timothy and most right. of the time he was in prison. Through letters, yeah. So where y'all got that from? <laughs> it's like discipleship needs to be proximity. And I get it, but There's yes, big, yeah. yes and because child Paul was in prison. Right. And he, you know, he's the discipler. Exactly. So I think like, I think it, 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 it will, it will require more of you. Yeah. You have to be more intentional if I'm not in your space or if you are not benefiting from the discipleship. Right. Because sometimes if I'm a missionary and I'm not physically present in your church every week, I'm not a priority. Yeah. And so I think like sometimes that also we have to figure that out. It's, it's almost like we're like college students. Right. Who's discipling them when they go to school? It's like, oh, I can't disciple you because there's no proximity. Right. No, we got to figure it out. Right. And so I feel like what I desire, I've been trying to be that. Mm -hmm. So before I flew to Atlanta, I had a meeting with my professor. I woke up at, I'm not a morning person, okay? I woke up at eight o'clock in the morning to go and have coffee with a girl that I feel like God's placed in my life to disciple her. Yeah. It was inconvenient. I was tired. I have to sit and listen yeah. and answer questions. <laughs> and I felt like, yeah, I have to do that. That is more important than getting on anybody's platform and preaching a message. Right. Because her, me discipling her is gonna outlast anything I could get, exactly. you know? Fruit that lasts. Yeah, and so I think it's like being intentional and saying, okay, I didn't really get all of this, but I'm gonna do that. My parents are pastors, so I feel like for the most part of my evangelistic journey I've been doing, they've been holding the weight of that, yeah. you know? And so I think it's like, okay, at this point, I can't cry about it anymore. Now I have to now I have to do that and trust yeah. that like God will have me. That's a good point too, because I think sometimes we're hesitant to give a yes because it's like, well, I didn't have that, so why should mm -hmm. I have to say yes? to do it the thing that you wouldn't provide to me. For sure. But like you said, sometimes we just have to bite the bullet and be like, you know what, if the Lord didn't allow me to have what I thought I yeah. needed so badly, maybe he allowed me to go through that season without what I thought I needed so that mm -hmm. now I could turn around and be that for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it's like realizing that your yes is not always about you. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's one of the problems. We want our yes to be, okay, if I'm gonna say yes, then everything about this yes has to benefit me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if we think about the, like the story of the Bible, one yes was saved all of us. Like all of us. We're all benefiting from yes. someone saying yes. For sure. And he could have easily been like, nope, like let them get what they deserve. Mm -hmm. But he became like the scripture literally says, he who knew no sin became, became sin. For sure. So that we could become the righteousness yeah. of God. So we are here today because of a yes. So it's like, who are we not to give a yes? Yeah. Like for sure. Imagine if Jesus had said no. Like, I, I, I do. I, I feel like one day God got me with that. Like, because you know, sometimes yes, they be hard. Yeah. And I feel like God got me with a, what if Jesus had the same posture concerning his mm. assignment that you have right. concerning yours? And I was like, all right, bro, I got like, you. Say no more. Say less. I think the other part, though, about discipleship, like, because I was just sitting here thinking like, Okay, God, but we're all saying the same thing about discipleship. And then I'm wondering, like, if there is a breakdown because discipleship duplicates. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if God is trying to break some things 
that he does not desire to be yeah. duplicated in the next generation where he's like actually i gotta stop that, this yeah. and actually i need y'all to lean into me and i because i think about the story of samuel how for a long time eli was samuel's connection to god yeah. And then when Eli's actual son started tripping, right. then God's like, now I need to speak directly to Samuel and raise Samuel up. And now Samuel becomes the voice right. that's then duplicated along the way. Exactly. And so there's a part of me that just right now in this moment is thinking that maybe there's something that God's trying to end. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I actually need to cut your ears off from what was yeah. so that I can show you what should be. And then that can be duplicated in the next generation. Yeah. because. When when there's patterns, I'm like, yes. God might be in this Something gotta get lack it. of passing down right. because maybe there are some things that have become standards mm -hmm. that are beneath God's original intent, right. and He's like, I actually cannot afford for that to make it to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like millennials are in a really, I think, great place because we've had both and yeah, we are. and so we've. Most of us got old parents. Yep. <laughs> so there is a, a greater level of wisdom that we possess just because of that, that gives us the ability to know how to go to God for ourselves, right. even though we would desire to also learn him through someone else. And so I think like there's something to be said about that, which is why I feel like now we're in a place where it's like, we can't keep crying about right. what we didn't get. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like the moment you have kids, you don't get to keep complaining about what mom and daddy didn't it's do. Over. It's a wrap. You got to figure out, okay, this is what they didn't do. And because they didn't do it, now I know what to give my children. Yeah. And so I think we've reached that place mm -hmm. because a lot of us in this generation now are raising people up. Yeah. And I don't get to be like, well, I don't got nothing for you because right. nobody, <laughs> no, nobody no, no, no. gave it to me. So I'm yeah, just no, I think there is a way that I tune my ear and say, God, show me. Show me what your heart is concerning this right. the generation. What does it look like to follow you? and have someone follow us as we follow christ because he can do that he, he can and i think it just gets back to the intimacy with the lord like, absolutely knowing that even these are things that you can ask the lord mm -hmm. like i think sometimes we limit our prayers to the lord where it's like you can literally ask him for anything in prayer he it's made like, the sun the sun like stand still there's nothing too hard for him and it sounds cliche but like literally it's not he'll even give you the strength to say yes to him for for sure. Philippians 2, 3, I believe, Philippians 2 13 says that it's God working in you, mm -hmm. giving you the will and the power to do yes, what pleases Him. For sure. So sometimes we, it comes back to pride, like stop thinking that you need to give this yes to the Lord on your own. Like yeah. He will help you. The weight is not on you at all. Because it is a weighty thing. For sure. There's a lot of weight that comes with saying yes to the Lord, but He wants to help you through it. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to surrender, be like, you know what? And that's, a, that's another problem too. A lot of us want to do things on our own. We want to be big and bad. We want to seem like we can carry this weight. We want to be the superhero. And that's, this is not a prosperity preaching bashing episode, but that's the problem with prosperity preaching yeah. because we make ourselves the superhero. And then when something yes. comes where you can't fix it, it's like, oh, what do I do? Like, I don't know anything other than me yeah. being the superhero of the, you know, of the problem. For sure. So it's like we need to submit everything back to the Lord and understand that He's willing to work with you, to partner yeah. with you, to give Him a yes. For sure. If you're willing to uh, to submit that to Him. You know, 100%. I think like m me, when I go to a place and stuff ain't working, I'm like, God is absent from this. Right. <laughs> like, because there's like a heart that exists within grace and then there's a heart that exists without yes. grace. And I don't want that one. <laughs> Because it's, it's going to be hard either way. It's going to be hard either way. But, I don't but there's a grace to hard. handle the hard when right. you're in the alignment and yes. will of God. And then there is a heart that is like, I'm, work, I'm working way too mm -hmm. hard. And so I got to a place more recently where I'm like, I'm going I'm to pause. Yeah. I'm going to pause on all the things. <laughs> um, because I've exerted too much energy. Yeah. And somewhere i lost him mm -hmm. along the way of if there was a decision there were a couple of decisions i don't know how many it was but i'm like i can actually sit down until you tell me what you want me to do like if you want to remove some things if you want to add some things i just let's just take a pause and that also requires yes mm -hmm. that also requires trust yeah. um this is what i do full time so to say i'm not going to do anything for two right. months is a trust walk mm -hmm. But I trust that God is my provider and he's my source. Right. And even the things that he allows me to do, they are not sources, they are resources. Exactly. And if he provided 
then he'll provide. He'll provide. Again, I'm really not concerned. I'm actually very happy to take a pause <laughs> because I don't want to do anything without the Lord. Yeah. And either I trust him or I don't. That's it's either you trust him or you don't. And this is why the secret place is so important because mm-hmm. you you only get trust by someone by getting to know them. For sure. Like it's easy for me to just say, Oh, trust the Lord, but you need to know him for yourself. Yeah, you can't trust someone you don't know. Exactly. We're not like you wouldn't just trust a stranger with your child. You're gonna trust you need to know that person mm-hmm. before you trust them with your child. Yeah. And so we need to really get back to knowing God. Like, for sure. Not just know him as a provider of financial, like know mm-hmm. him as a healer, know him as deliverer. Get to know him as father. And if that's the only thing that he shows you, like get to know him as father for sure. alone. We don't always need to be looking for God to come and just elevate us. Like allow him to heal your heart. Mm-hmm. Know him as one who will comfort you in betrayal, regret, yeah. shame, condemnation. For sure. Because so many of us are trying to heal those things through accomplishments. Mm-hmm. The Lord just wants to heal you of those things by his presence. Mm-hmm. And I feel like sometimes we bypass how important the presence of the lord is because we're too busy trying to get the acknowledgement of man Mm -hmm. rather than the attention of the lord no for sure i I love one of my favorite stories is i think it's exodus 33 where god is fed up with people because they've just built an idol he's like moses take your people (laughs) into i'm like these are your people right and but i love what i love about that story is the whole purpose of the journey is to get them to the promised Mm -hmm. land and moses is like no yep. he's like i'm gonna do all god's like i'm gonna do all these things with like for you i'm gonna handle the enemies yeah. i'm gonna make sure there's an angel with you mm-hmm. so you good I, i'll still be with you just yeah. not all of me and go ahead mm-hmm. i'm gonna make sure i fulfill my word and moses goes we don't want it without you yeah and i think that that comes from relationship moses has spent so much time with the lord that he recognizes the presence is more important than the promise and i think oftentimes we are pursuing things in life that cause us to drift away from god missing the fact that the most important thing is the presence of god and and when we talk about trust it's like the only reason i say yes is because i trust god it's because i know him and it's like but that's why he wants you to say yes in the first exactly. place so you can get to, get know, to know him. him. It's almost kind of like sometimes you got to go in the first couple of times like, bro, <laughs> this sounds really crazy. But who I've known you to be, mm-hmm. at least even if it's the smallest inkling of revelation of him, right. you can apply that to this yes. Like he's a God that loves you. He ain't going to pull you into exactly. nothing that's going to harm you. Now you gonna experience something there that's gonna be, that's gonna hurt a little bit. It's gonna make you question. You'll be suffering like you're gonna suffer. You with sure? Christ. You sure? Right. That's what you want me to do? And he's like, yeah, because without this journey, you would have never gotten to know mm-hmm. me this way. Right. And so I think like we all need a mind shift. Um, and the first little check we can have with ourselves is that our life doesn't belong to us. Because most of the time, when mm-hmm. we don't say yes, we're counting up the cost of losing ourselves, yes. of losing our dreams, of losing our pursuits, right. of losing our desires. The first time God asked you something, you're like, but what about all the things that don't matter in comparison to him? To, to eternal life. And we think about like Jesus is yes. He literally bought us. Like our lives don't belong to mm-hmm. us because Jesus, the word redeem literally means to buy back something. Listen. And we use all these big church words like, oh, I'm redeemed. But if we knew what redeem means. Are you sure you like, redeemed? redeemed? For sure. The Lord bought us with a price, yeah. and so he owns us, our life. So like you said, we really don't have a choice to say yes, because we've already been bought. But even that is the Lord's mercy that he's given Man. us the opportunity to be like, you know, I'm going to let you decide to say mm-hmm. yes to me. Because really, I could, you know, I could really turn this thing and you'd be doing what I tell you to do without a choice. He could. But he gives us free will. So it's like, who wouldn't serve a God that gives us free will? That gives us patience and mercy. Because even like you said, you didn't renounce right away, like... All of us have been in, the, in a point where the Lord has told us something. We heard clearly. We were like, yeah. uh, I don't want to do that today. We're going to wait to see like if you really meant it, like, if it was really that serious. Mm-hmm. But the Lord's mercy. Yeah. I think that this generation doesn't really appreciate, appreciate the mercy of God because we never think that we do anything wrong. So we don't see a reason for mercy. It's for like, sure. It's not that bad. Like I'm not hurting anybody else or yeah. I'm just doing what I want to do. I'm living life, so I don't need mercy. It's so it's, most of us are existing on it. <laughs> right. The only reason you still breathing is, mercy. is the mercy of God. Right. For sure. No, I, I completely agree with that. I even think about how I like I literally cried 
when I thought about the fact that I had made a covenant with Satan. Yes. And the Lord was still letting me mount platforms and right. preach the gospel. Preaching, teaching. And I was like, <laughs> I remember watching this sermon and this pastor from the UK was like, America, your <laughs> preachers are defiled. And I'm like, yes, they are, James. And then after I listened to that podcast, I was like, like, oh my God. That was me. It was me. I was in the pulpit. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm married I, to another God. And talking tough when Satan is really like, bro, you, you, like, brother, we right. be. And I'm like, oh. but even that, like, how easy do we give our yes to the enemy? Very easy, because oh. we think it's us. Right. We we think we're we think we're like, oh, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm in control. Like, no, you're yeah. being deceived. You said yes to a to the enemy. You say yes to drinking, drugging, yeah. premarital sex. We say yes to so many other things that do us so much harm. harm. But then it comes to saying yes to a God who will do nothing but protect you. Nothing but be a shield for you. Nothing but cover you. Like his name is literally Jehovah Gabor. He said, I'll fight for you. Yeah. So we can say yes to the adversary, but not yes to an all-knowing God. And so yeah. it just gets back to like how important it is for us to know him. For sure. To know him. Like, for sure. To know the Lord is the fullness of joy. Yeah. And when you really understand that, I think our yes will be a lot easier. Yeah. And I think too, like... Even, I think in general, we have this whole, like, it's not that serious kind of thing. But it's because the plan of the enemy has been so infused within our culture, in our right. everyday life. Right. It feels like, oh, I'm just doing, like, yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing. It's like... That's just how life goes. Like, this it, is just a part of it. But yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so, if you were going to minister to somebody, so let's... Think about if you could leave one final like message, one encouraging word, one exhortation to somebody who feels like the Lord is asking them to do something, but they don't really want to give a yes to the Lord. Mm. They know their gifts, they know their calling, but they're still having problems giving a yes to the Lord. Like, what would you say to that person? Hmm. They're like, I feel like there are two scriptures that I live by. I'm going to misquote the Bible. <laughs> I'm going to pull it up. Um, but the first one is... I'm trying to figure out which version I want to read it in. We just want to make sure we don't misquote scripture. Listen, I'm going to read it. And y'all need to go check it for yourself. Yes. Every time you sit under the word, you need to make sure you write it down. And go look for go it. verify it because the, the way <laughs> the way people be making up stuff these days. <laughs> but the first one is Psalms twenty seven um, and four, and it says, "The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple." And so I think I was that person. Like I was a person who would say no to God all the time and thought it was cute. Like the Lord asked me to do something, and I said, mm -mm. Yeah. and it's like that's so dumb. Um, and I like this scripture for me has produced something in my heart that says, like, my highest ambition in life is to please God, and so there is like no other alternative to that. So, if someone asks me to do something, if I do something, the first thing I'm asking when I'm off the platform is, God, were you pleased? Mm -hmm. Um, and if that is my highest ambition. When God asks me to do something, there is no other option but to say yes, because my life, literally, I exist to please the Lord. And I think that based off of this scripture, that has to be the only thing I seek. If I'm pursuing, like, pleasing man, I won't be able to say yes to God all the time. If I'm pursuing, like, becoming famous or having a platform or having influence or doing things that make Brenda happy, then my one desire isn't to seek the Lord. And so I think, like, that's one thing I try to live by. And then... The other side of it, because I think that there is balance, is it helps me surrender things, is Matthew 6 and 33. That if I seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness, all these less important things will be added unto me. So the things that I'm holding tightly or the concerns I'm holding tightly or the desires that I'm holding tightly, just off the mere fact that I say, God, forget about these things. I'm after your kingdom and what pleases you. All the stuff I could have dreamed of finds me. So I don't even got to work hard for the stuff I would have been working hard for going away from what God's asked me to do. 
he's literally drawn them to me. And that's not just a scripture that has been evident in my life. Any opportunity I've ever had, it came to me. I didn't have to chase it. Yeah. Even living in Los Angeles, California, where it is a city where you chase your dreams, yes. my dreams have always found me. Every job I've ever had, random person will just call me and be like, hey, you wanna do so and so? And I recognize it's because I gave up that dream a long time ago. I, I don't even, anticipate working in production anymore and still get opportunities to do that and so i think there it goes back to knowing god and trusting him so that starts with the psalms 27 thing right i'll seek the lord i'll dwell in his like in his temple and i'll meditate on his word i get to learn his character i get to understand him i get to know his heart so even when he's asking me to give up something i still know he will always have my best interest at heart so then it gets easier to be like, yeah, bro, let's do it. Because yeah. you know better anyway. I'm not about to sit here trying to like rack my brain on how to figure Because here's the thing. When you make a decision outside of God, the weight's on you to figure it out. Yeah. You got to carry that weight. You have to carry You got to figure it out. That's why when stuff be hard, I'd be like, mm -mm, something about this got Brenda on it. And I don't, want, I don't want no parts of that. So let's reel it in. And so I think like there is safety, there's covering, there's grace. And all of those things exist, period. But there is just a different flow when you're in alignment with God's will. Like you literally get equipped for things that you could never qualify for without the grace of God. He'll give you wisdom and insight. I don't know how I put words together and preach a sermon. I, I don't know how that happens. There, but it is the grace of God, not because I did all the things right, but because I said yes. And you just become a vessel yeah. for him to use however he pleases. That's good. And you know, when you say yes, it is exciting because you're on a journey where it's like, you know, anything could happen. Anything, anything could happen. happen. But when you understand who's covering you, like mm -hmm. anything could happen. You never know where you will end up when not you for say sure. yes to God. And it's. Literally, the scripture says he will do exceedingly and abundantly beyond you can think or imagine. Mm -hmm. Your yes will take you places. Your yes will open up doors. Your yes will connect you with people. Yeah. Like, you will literally meet covenant relationships because of your yes Absolutely. to God. So, you know, if you're discouraged, just give it a chance. Like, what is there to lose at this point? I was just about to say that. Like, like what is there to just lose? Just try. Just if, try. If, if you don't like what happens, then go back to do whatever <laughs> you're doing for. Go. I'm sure it won't be better. But I think like I think it is that it's like what do you have more to lose to not say yes right. than you ever would by just giving God a yes because the weight and the pressure is on him. Like whenever God asks me to do something, I'm like, all right, now you know this one's on you. Right. This one's on you. <laughs> and I feel like you know the once you and you only know that by building a relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord, it's like it gets easier because when I show up to preach, I'm like, I'm a study, I'm a pray, but when I get up there, it's you have to you. show up. Because I this, don't ask for preaching engagements. I don't ask for anything. So, Lord, if you sent me there, yeah, I'm expecting you for to sure. show up. I'm expecting your glory. And mm -hmm. I'm expecting you to do what you want to do. I'm expecting your presence to change something in this atmosphere. Yeah. And so when you understand that your yes is really bringing you into partnership with God, mm -hmm. like, who wouldn't want to partner with God? Yeah, it's a privilege. Like, it's really a privilege, it is a to, be, privilege. to minister the gospel in whatever way you're called to minister. Yeah. It's a privilege, the fact that he would allow us with our past, with our past, the things that we've done, the things that we used mm -hmm. to do, the people that we used to be, that he says, I want to use you. I want to yeah. partner with you to do something in the earth that will change eternity. Like, who wouldn't say yes to that? Yeah, because whatever you build outside of God is going to fade away. It's going to fade like, away. Like, the moment you take your last breath, it's not going it, to, it's gone. And so I think we have to definitely learn to live for more than the things we acquire in this world. Yes. And we do that by giving God a yes. Give it. So look, family, that is your that is your plug to give God a yes today. <laughs> give God literally just try to give God a yes, and He is going to blow your mind. Mm -hmm. So we are going to wrap this episode up. So everyone, show some love to Brenda Palmer in the comments. Like, first of all, you she was about to start preaching a whole sermon. So. Wow. Oh, this is crazy. the ministry that you can be blessed by. And I love how you said one one time, we're going to wrap this up, but how you don't go into sermons with just like a long note is literally just an overflow of your relationship with the mm -hmm. Lord. So you can follow her on Instagram. I am Brenda Palmer. Yep. YouTube, just Google the name. You will be blessed by the ministry. Mm -hmm. um, but Secret Place family, we will be back in the Secret Place sometime soon. But as you know, we're going to close this out in prayer. So if you know the Lord, I want you to join me in covering this woman of God as she continues to mm -hmm. say yes, as she continues her journey of saying yes to the Lord. So let's enter the secret place and cover our sister Brenda Palmer. So Father, we just thank you. Lord, we bless you, God. We honor you, Lord. We thank you for even giving us an opportunity 
to say yes to you. Father, we thank you that you have said yes to us. We thank you for sending Jesus, that he said yes, Lord, that we may be saved, redeemed, forgiven, and brought back into relationship with you. So, Father, we say thank you. And Lord, we thank you for your daughter here who has given you a yes. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would continue to strengthen her to give you a yes. Lord, that she is strengthened to give you a yes in the hard times, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you even release angels, Lord, warring and ministering angels, Lord, to war on her behalf as she continues to give a yes. Father, we declare and apply the blood of Jesus over her life. Father, that any demonic oppression, Lord, would not be able to prosper. Father, we declare the truth of your word over her, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. Lord, every lying tongue shall be judged because, because Lord, that is her inheritance as your servant. That is her inheritance as saying yes to you. So, Father, we pray that you continue to increase her. Father, every financial need, Father, we thank you that you will meet and exceed her expectation. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you that your word declares that no good thing will you withhold mm -hmm. from the one who walks upright with you. So, Father, we thank you that as she walks upright with you, release every good thing attached to her, Father. Release everything that she needs in the name of Jesus, Father. Even relationships. Father, we pray that you send wise women, Father, wise men into her life that can disciple her, that can pour into her, Lord, with no expectation. Father, we come against every leech, Father, that you would even remove those things in her life that need to be removed, Father. Mm -hmm. Everything that may be sucking the life out of her, Father, everything that may be stealing things from her, Lord, we pray that you remove those things which need to be removed so that you can make room, Lord, mm -hmm. for the things that are supposed to be in her life. Father, we pray that you continue to download into her wisdom, knowledge, revelation. Father, stir up every gift inside of her, Lord, even the gifts that she may be afraid to fully operate in. Father, begin to give her confidence, Lord, to walk boldly in you, Father. Increase the evangelistic grace. Father, we thank you that she will prophesy in season and out of season, Lord. We thank you that you're giving her more wisdom and knowledge of your truth, Lord, that she may declare your truth and set the captives free in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we just thank you that you will blow her mind, Lord, even before the year is up, Lord, do something that blows her mind. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you that you bless this vessel for her yes. So, Father, we thank you. Lord, we agree with what heaven has said about her. Father, we come into agreement with the will of God for her life. Lord, you watch over your word to perform it. So, Father, perform your word for this, your daughter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Secret Place family, until next time, we will see you back in the Secret Place. Share this with somebody who needs to give a yes to God. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know the hardest thing in your journey of saying yes. Let us know some things that have helped you say yes, and we want to engage with you in the comments. Until next time, family, we love you. Peace out.